guys, happy to be here. I'm Nadia from Addictive Team. Uh, before we're gonna get started, a quick intro. Addictive fundamentally is a growth engine, and we help our clients a lot to make the most of their app user base, uh, to activate new installers, to make the first target action, to upsell existing payers and non payers and of course, last but not the least, to make the most from the lapsed users, bring them back, and reinforce their purchasing behavior. And the topic why we are here is actually that Addictive as a team loves being challenged and the next step for us to deliver excellence for our clients is always to question how we can do re-engagement more efficient for our clients because it's always has been the topic. And here comes churn prediction. Because for most of our clients, user retention is really, really crucial. And once they acquire users, we see that most of them drop off within the seven days after the install. And it's unknown, like, it's a known truth that the longer a user stays in the application, the higher chances for them to make, purchase, or any target action you're looking for, and increase the LTV of uh, the user base. So here steps in re-engagement, because user acquisition drives new users, re-engagement makes the most out of them. And for most of our clients, the proxy to start re-engaging users is classic inactivity window. But sometimes it's not enough. Back in the day, it was a nice proxy, but I know and actually has had lots of conversations today with uh, direct clients, agencies, who look into churn prediction and most of them already work on it. To make re-engagement more efficient and to be more precise with timing, when they should start re-engaging their users and start showing the ad in front of them not to do that. Because again, the earlier you start to engage in the users, uh, the more effective and prominent point to show the ad in front of them, the less costly is it. Retaining users is cheaper than reacquiring them. So, Churn prediction actually solves a lot of issues. First, it complements user acquisition at the right time by reinforcing their interest in right moment and keeping them safe in the application. It also gives you flexibility in stepping back a bit from inactivity window and finding more effective point to re-engage the users at the time when they should see the ad, not to leave the app. Also, what you able to do with churn prediction is foresee the outcomes in terms of financial losses in case you are not bringing the users back because there's lots going on in terms of losses and gains when you do re-engagement. Of course, it depends uh, on application, on the business model because for some games, it's really like hyper casual stuff. It's classic that LTV of the user is really short and it's okay for them to churn early. For dating as well, they're not really interested in retaining lapsed users because this means that they have already found a pair and they're more active in activating users and upselling them. But for gaming, it's one of the classic stuff. They're really paying a lot to acquire pairs and then they want to do maximum to keep them safe in the application, purchasing and increasing the LTV. So, as I mentioned previously, lots of our clients, especially big ones, already work on churn prediction. It's super hard. It requires lots of commitment and lots of investments. And starting from this year, I see more and more third-party solutions entering the market to provide churn prediction tools, and Addictive is one of them, because we want to make re-engagement efficient. And we have ready tool. We're going to talk a little bit about it, but the main focus here is if it's interesting for you and if it's something that your teams are working on. Because our team also tries to align with all the changes that are happening in the industry, like Android Sandbox that is coming. That's why when we have been working on our churn prediction tool, which actually took us more than two years before we enrolled it to the market, so, even though we do user prediction on a user level, the end result is segment, which aligns with Android and Sandbox, which is coming in the next year or so. And also, it really cuts the need for our clients 
to invest their own resources into developing. We love being challenged, and actually, with big clients, we did head-to-head tests with our true and prediction tool, and in the vast majority of cases, we won. If not, it gave us lots of learnings to improve and make it even better to be efficient in what we are doing. And again, everything that complements current activities of our clients work amazingly. A little bit of how we are working on it. As you know, uh, machine learning, uh, artificial intelligence really focused on juicing as much data as possible to the algorithm to provide the outcome. So we take a lot of raw data to analyze user behavioral patterns like frequency of the activity, last session, session lens, purchasing behavior. Combine that with monetary signals that are coming from those specific users and then we compare it against the historical data, the known already. And this allows us to build different user segments with their likelihood to churn, and then you can take an action to make the most of it. We use this system that allows us to score the probability of users to churn from zero to one, where one is the highest likelihood for users to churn. And being a retargeting provider, we, of course, more focused on re-engaging users that are most likely to churn. That's why we strongly recommend to focus on something that is higher than 0.8 in a churn prediction. This is actually one of my favorite slides because it's a use case with one of our clients. And as you see, there are two of the graphs. And this, again, recalls to my sentence about inactivity window not being the best proxy for re-engaging users. On the first slide, in a dark blue, you can see the audience of users that is re-engaged by current retargeting activities of this specific client. It's a gaming one. And green one is actually the segments predicted to be trend. As you see, uh, the highest likelihood of users, we have a bunch of users not covered by retargeting campaigns with the highest likelihood to churn. Sorry. <laughs> and this opens up actually lots of freedom and a playground for marketers to play around their current retargeting activities because you can take this segment untouched but with the highest probability to churn and run dedicated retargeting campaigns for those specific users who will churn. And when we enroll our churn prediction tool, we check it and check how valid and reliable the model is. So far, we see that on the user segments with the highest likelihood to be churn, we have more than 90% of accuracy because we compare our prediction to what actually happened. And we also believe that Taking prompt action allows you to save money and to secure those financial losses that might happen if you lose those pairs, because on this slide, it's analysis made on pairs only. And also, Addictive is one of pioneers in uplift testing incrementality. That's why we check uplift on everything we do. And we see that for users in segments with the highest probability to churn, they have really low likelihood to get back organically. We see amazingly strong uplift for those segments, meaning it's not, pro it's not profitable and worth investment to secure finances of our clients. Last but not the least, when you do churn prediction, irrespective of how you do it, it actually allows you to use it in various ways. It's not only to be used for programmatic upper targeting because Remarketing as it is has lots of channels and you can use it for CRM activities. You can start to use it on social media. The call to action is just to start doing something to be more efficient in what you are doing. And again, you can still have an activity window as a proxy and separate campaigns covering users with predicted probability to churn with respect to inactivity window. But layer on top, some campaigns that are going to re-engage users who will churn with the highest likelihood for that. And again, it secures lots of finances. Last not, but not the least to finish up the presentation because we are pretty short with it. The end result of any churn prediction you are making is first, you take prompt action at the right timing because this is the future. It's actually the future and 
it's common true and we discuss it a lot with our clients, uh, with our peers in industry. An activity window is simply not enough to be efficient in what you're doing, especially in retargeting. You need to figure out the sweet spot when you re-engage the users to make the maximum of it. On the other side, it also can provide you lots of information about why your users churn, because when you start deep diving into whether or not churn prediction is working, you can also transfer that both on user acquisition and a product side. You can figure out the flow of your users, uh, which actually aligns with their behavioral patterns, which leads them to churn or, on contrary, keep them stay. Also, taking into account that user behavioral patterns might be different, and for one user, it might be okay to go into the application once per 14 day, for example, just example, and keep on playing in the next 14 days, but you have, like, for example, an activity window only 14 days, you're gonna re-engage them again and again while it's a pattern for them to play that. With strong prediction, you're more accurate. Uh, also, Fundamentally, you save a lot of money because financial loss is critical and eliminating that is a key for success. I think that's it from my side and I leave the room for your questions. Do you have one? Come on, it wasn't that explicit. <laughs> Do you guys invest in the churn prediction? Is some initiatives are going on on your side is it something that you regard as potentially interesting? So typically they ask you the question, but this is good. Um, I love challenging people because- Somebody speak, come on, where's the brave people? This is your chance. By the way, you deserve, I'm gonna buy you a coffee afterwards for finishing early. This is uh, my favorite kind of presentation. No one has a question, comment, anything? Really, good. Well, that means they loved what you had to say. Who knows, maybe not. <laughs> we'll see on the outcome. You can catch me up on the booth because indeed, I wanted to keep it short and to be as a room for conversation. Because as I mentioned, what I love in Addictive, we love being challenged. And in case you have cool ideas, interesting thoughts about churn prediction, you can drop by our booth and we have a talk about it. Okay, thank you very much.